So I must ask if anyone else is getting the message that seems to keep coming week after week through these scriptures. See, each week we are continually getting passage after passage that mentions giving things up, letting go of possessions, and showing kindness. And here we are again with another reading that tells us to give everything up to follow God. So, why are we getting so many passages in such a repetitive way? I think the Lord's trying to tell us all something very important. So I stand before you all today and inform you that I am selling all of my possessions so I can better follow the Lord and all His teachings. Which means I will allow Carrie to sell all my Cubs collectibles and all my Lego sets. Um, Okay, okay, I take that back. I take that back. But what I am going to do is make an effort to remove the things from my life that have led me astray from best following what the Lord wants for me in my life. Now, the first thing that strikes me when I look at the readings for today was that wonderful psalm lesson that we got. See, when I was going through my August intensive at the seminary recently, we had this teacher, and she thought it would be a great idea to have us read the same psalm lesson every day, but from a different translation of the Bible. Now, it was nice because each interpretation caused my classmates and myself to take different things from it. That psalm that we read every day was the one that we read today, Psalm 139. Now, for someone like me, who believes in signs from God, this was a big one for me. And it starts in verse 1 by saying, O Lord, you have examined me, and you know me. I mean... I take that message that God knows everything about each and every one of us. He knows what we think, what we feel, what we believe, and what we fear. Now, for myself, this not only means that He knows me, but He will place us where He wants us to be when He needs us to be there. Then this psalm lesson goes on to say, You are all around me. In front of me and in back of me, you lay your hand on me. Now, we should all take comfort in a message like this, knowing that God is always by our side, guiding and helping us. We are never alone. All the while, He will be by our side, laying a gentle hand on each and every one of us to make sure we are going the right way. That is, if we want to let it happen. See, God, this amazing God, could have made each and every one of us blind followers and believers in Him. But what good would it be for us to love and choose Him because we have to? Much like a parent and a child, we raise our children in hopes that they will, in adult life, come to respect us, our teachings, and love us in return because they want to. That is much more rewarding kind of love, and that is the kind of love that God wants from us. So we have a choice to believe and follow God or to refuse Him and go down our own path in life, which may end up in pain and destruction. Like it said in Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 16, we are informed that today I offer you life and prosperity or death and destruction. This is what I'm commanding you today. Love the Lord your God, follow His directions, and obey His commands, laws, and rules. It is when... We follow all these rules and do what is expected of us that we will receive the rewards for doing what is right. The really nice thing about the rules and expectations set out by God is that we as followers will find it easy to stick to them when we feel the love and grace of God. When we fully experience this love, 
we in turn will want to do all that we can to best serve our Lord, thus following the expectations that God set out for us. Then as we follow these rules from God, we will continue to receive his love and blessings, making it easier and easier to follow him. So this can be a wonderful, love-filled circle that will never end. Where we can turn from him and face the pain and destruction that may come to our lives. As our Old Testament lesson tells us in verse 18, we are informed that if you do, I tell you today that you will certainly be destroyed. See, even though our God loves us with the unconditional love of a parent, He will punish us. As we parents sometimes have to punish our children. (laughs) Turning our hearts from God and all His truth and teachings, like turning from the lessons of our parents, can and will result in negativity. Now here is some wonderful news that I have for all of you today, is that I believe God will give each and every one of us one more chance. I do believe that when we have left our earthly bodies, God will provide us that one last chance to turn back to Him and follow Him in the afterlife. So what does God expect us to do to be able to follow Him and His loving teachings? If we go by what our gospel lesson says, we would expect that we need to denounce everything in our lives. We are told in Luke 14, 26, that if people come to me and are not ready to abandon their fathers, mothers, wives, children, brothers, and sisters, as well as their own lives, they cannot be my disciples. So in those days, to follow Jesus and his teachings, you had to be willing to give up all that you know and give your all to God. Now, I would like to think in those days, it it would have been fairly easy for them to do this, as they would have spent so much time away from their homes, and they would probably go a long time without seeing those from the life they would have known before following Jesus. Luckily, I don't think we need to take it that literally in our lives today. But I do think we are expected to give up things in our lives that would cause our hearts to stray from God. We live in a world that is so much different than the days that Jesus lived in, and we have many, many distractions that can take our focus from the Lord and what He wants and expects from us. God does not expect us to do this blindly, though, as He wants us to know what we are striving to do and what the ultimate cost will be for us. As Jesus does tell us in Luke 14, 28, suppose you want to build a tower, you would first sit down and figure out what it costs, then you would see if you have enough money to finish it. We need to see what aspects of our lives we will have to get rid of to follow God and His Word. What will the ultimate cost end up being? Now, for some of us, it might be something small or silly. As an example, with the changes that me and my family had to make in our lives, we had to find a new home for a dog that we had. Now, there was more than one reason why we had to get rid of our dog, Liberty, but one of those was that we could not take her with us as we moved in preparation for all the changes that we had to make to follow the call of God then there may be some bigger costs to some of us, as I experienced with my friend of 20 plus years. As I have been learning more and reading the scriptures, I have changed some of my viewpoints about the message behind the words in the Bible and came to accept things I may not have before. Unfortunately, this good friend of mine is more of a literalist. And he takes everything for what is written in black and white and refuses to look for the deeper meaning. Because of this difference in beliefs, unfortunately that friendship had to end. 
So the cost to follow the word and truth of God, as well as spreading the word to others, can cost us a lot in our lives. So we need to take time to pray about where we each are in our lives and where we believe God is calling us to go and then decide if it is worth the cost. Now, for me, deciding if it is worth the cost is very easy as I go back again to that passage in Deuteronomy where it says, Today I offer you life and prosperity or death and destruction. I want life and prosperity. So we need to become disciples and be willing to take up our crosses and walk alongside Jesus. For starters, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a disciple as someone who accepts and helps to spread the teachings of a famous person. So we need to learn and understand the teachings of Christ and be willing to teach that truth that we learn to others. God not only wants us to know, but He wants us to help others to know, learn, grow, and follow Him. Then we must ask ourselves, what does it really mean to take up our cross to follow Jesus? To the people in the time of Jesus, the cross was a very vivid and true reality for anyone that went against Roman authority. It was a form of punishment served for the worst of Rome's enemies. Now we do not, God does not want us to physically take up a cross in order to follow Jesus. So we need to determine what our form of cross carrying truly is. I believe that to take up one's cross means for each of us to be willing to pay some sort of price for the sake of God himself. It means that we need to be willing to endure shame, embarrassment, reproach, rejection, persecution, and in some cases, even martyrdom for His sake. You know, we once lived in a world where God-fearing Christians ran our country, and we now see a generation that is starting to turn away from Him. Although I do not think that, it is, that we are in a world where we have to be afraid to be Christians, I do believe that there are many who think negatively about Christians, thus making it hard to always openly express our faith. I do believe we can have a world where we are able to be open about our faith as long as we are willing to follow and teach others as well. We need to become disciples of Christ in the world we live in today. We need to take this word and show others how it pertains to their lives in the world we live in today. We need to go out to other cultures and sacrifice our comfort zone and allow, our, our, and allow ourselves to fit the word and truth to those who need to hear it. The costs can be high, but the reward will come when we see the word begin to shape those that are now hearing it. Then we will be blessed with the never-ending love and grace of our great teacher, our Lord and Savior. Peace and love to you all today.